Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. So I'm Tom Ferry, honored to be a guide, a Sherpa, someone that's going to help you navigate this. And all of you that worked with me through the pandemic know I'm a wartime general. I am at my best when you might feel like your back is against the wall because it just makes me want to step up and serve at an even higher level. So thank you for carving out time today to be a part of this. It's probably going to go an hour and 15 minutes because I added something special, which you're going to see. So buckle up, take lots of notes and know in advance, yes, slides, you'll be getting a copy. This whole thing will be recorded. You will get access to it, but it's going to be much later. So don't be, Hector, go ahead and just kill the chat. Don't be inside the chat. Turn it off. I don't want it. It is a distraction. Here's our outcomes. Only two things, clarity and action. What I know is this, knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. When you know what to do, you know what to say, and you know what to market, because we're going to cover all three today, then and only then do you find yourself in that place where you are unstoppable, ready to do whatever it takes. So we're going to spend time getting you as clear as possible so you don't have these open loop conversations in your head or this, this feeling of like, uncertainty around what's going to happen next. We're going to move forward powerfully together. That's what we want to accomplish. Now, I'm actually, I think it'd be fun if you do any posting today, just for fun, use the hashtag, the NAR effect, the NAR effect. I don't even know what it means. My team came up with it. I like it, but do some posting today and add that hashtag and make sure you tag me as well. Now, I've got a ridiculous, ridiculous panel here. I've got Jimmy Mackin, who's the last 15 minutes of the show today. is going to give you five listing attraction campaigns that you can implement and start taking listings immediately. I have Jack Miller, the CEO of T360, who I, I turn to the moment this stuff started to arise. Jack, what do we need to do? What's the plan? Keep me in the loop. I think he's the most informed person in the US on what's happening with the MLSs, what's happening with NAR, what's happening with lawsuits, what's happening with all the big brokers. So I've asked him once again to share his insights with you. Knowledge equals confidence. Ignorance equals fear. And then I asked three friends, three super dynamic individuals that are brilliant at operating their business, brilliant at scaling their teams, brilliant. One is being a broker, Lisa Chinati from Boston and New Hampshire, call it New England area, right? Going to sell a gazillion houses this year. We're going to get her insights as a broker and a team leader. I've got the Byron Lazine. You know him as one of the top agents in the state of Connecticut. You also know him as the CEO of BAM Media, aka the broke agent, right? I owe Eric an apology, but you saw that I took over, right, Byron on that. And then one of my great friends right here in the great state of Texas, she works the Houston marketplace. She's got the top team for Compass there, monster business, Jamie McBarton. We're going to do a bunch of role plays and I'm going to ask them, what are they doing? And then you're going to get those insights. So again, you have the certainty that you need to move forward powerfully. Now, show flow. Jack's going to talk to us about what we need to know. We're going to do a panel discussion. Jimmy's going to finish. It's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes. It's going to go by really quick. You need to be taking as many notes as you can. You need to get out. I killed the chat for a reason. I don't want you there. I want you focused. Now, I'm just going to give you a little insight. And I did this when we did this recently on the buy side. So I'm going to do it quickly. But, but I believe, and I think you know this to be true, that if your mindset is we're in trouble and it's over and I'm screwed and I don't know what to do, you're done. I want to remind you, I want to remind you that the only thing that's constant in real estate, just like in the universe, is change. And for many people, you can remember listing books. And when we transition to the internet, you made that transition. You made that change. You can remember having Thomas guides or maps with buyers inside your car. And what a blessing it was to suddenly have something like Google to just type in an address or a Tesla to tell it. And it just drives you there. You made that change as well. But another change you made, and I still love this, is your HP calendar, right? there, The HP 12 calculator. And now today, we use successors like the Palm Agent app. You have made all of these changes throughout your career from no lockboxes to lockboxes, changes in the MLS, changes in contracts. Here's one I want you to pay attention to. And I don't know for my panel, so if you guys have seen this yet, but the seller concession conversation is going to be a huge conversation. And I say this with love and respect. The vast majority of agents I know, when I, when I give them a math equation, they kind of, ah, except for one. When I say, what's 2.75% of $495,000? Bang. You all seem to have that answer very quickly. But when we start talking about 
what is going to happen inside of a seller concession now and what the options are, what I'm thrilled to announce is my friends at Palm Agent have actually built for you the seller concession calculator for the VA, for an FHA, for conventional, all the things you need to work with now inside of this calculator. So shout out to my friends. If you don't have this, I would hit that very quickly. Just grab that, get it. It's a free app. There's a paid version. Get the free app, get the paid version. I don't care. But knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. If you don't have this calculator on your phone, I think you are, you're doing yourself and your clients a disservice. If you have some other solution, God bless you. Awesome. This is the one that I love. No, I don't invest it or own it, but I wish I did. All right. So very quickly, spotlight me again. Thank you. In the theme of change, I want to remind you what you did during the pandemic. I've been out on the road talking all over the country this year and, and soon to be going to Europe next year for a tour. And I can tell you that every smart agent like you said to yourself, oh, you mean I got to wear gloves and a mask and a hazmat suit, and I can only have one person at a time inside my open house. I don't like all this, but you did it. You did it. And I just want to remind you, yeah, change in the very beginning is a little uncomfortable, especially if you don't know what to say and you don't know what to do. But the second you know what to say and you know what to do, it doesn't matter what the rules are. You have always adapted. You have always adapted. You have always adapted. You got this. The only thing I'm telling people now is, here's what's great. Unlike the pandemic, when we all got notified around March 15th, hey, the world's going to close for a couple of weeks. You only had a few hours. We have 90 plus days. You have 90 plus days to get data, to get insight, to know exactly what's going on in your market, to get the zeitgeist of what your customers are thinking. So you can, like all my clients, and JP, you mentioned, we've been working on this forever, Right For some of my clients, we've been working on this since 2018. They are well prepared and ready to go. You got 90 days, which is more than enough time for you to get the confidence, the skills, and the marketing you need to rock. Now, with that said, that is a bad strategy. And I'm shocked by how many people I'm seeing saying, well, I'm just going to wait until June. And my response is, yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea. I, I don't, I don't want to wait and be in a panic, right? Instead, you've all heard the story, right? The cow runs away from the storm and gets pummeled by it, but the bison turns right into it. And for many of us during the pandemic, you were the bison. You turned right into it. And I'm asking you for your customers, for your business, for your family to turn and let's go right at it together. Now, to help us get started on that, what do we need to know? I told you show flow is Jack Miller. So go ahead and let's spotlight Jack. Jack, as the CEO of T360, you just spent a couple of days with all the biggest brokers in the country. You are working with NAR, you're working with the MLSs. We've got, it looks like about 11,000 individual links, which probably means about 20,000 people watching. What do they need to know? Yeah, well, I've got a few slides on that, but I'll say broadly, the biggest changes that are gonna impact practitioners are the changes to the rules that will become effective in July. And I'll take you through those. We've also been hosting some webinars and meetings with our clients and with some of the large brokers. We've talked to a lot of the largest brokers in the country about these rules changes. We're talking to MLSs about them. And fundamentally, I think what everybody needs to recognize is the new rules represent a philosophical change in the way we approach real estate with buyers and sellers, mostly in terms of how we talk about it, uh, not necessarily in how much money anybody on this call makes or what the opportunity in real estate is. We still are very T360, our whole organization is still very bullish on this industry. It's a great industry. It's a place where you can have a terrific career. So we don't feel like any of that has gone away. It's also a very robust industry in terms of what it is that we do. So at a high level, I'll take you guys through a few slides just to level set us on what the settlement is and some a few do's and don'ts. And then I picked out, Tom, we had a tremendous amount of questions submitted to us. We're building a very extensive frequently asked questions yes. document about this. I picked out um, the three or four that came up related to the listing side, as this is the focus of this webinar. So I'll take you through those. So before I jump into that, um, we put this in front of everything now as an antitrust disclaimer, we're not supposed to discuss fees or commissions with other brokers as it's a violation of the antitrust act. It's exactly what the case was about. 
uh, which is to prevent price fixing, boycotting other antitrust violations. So I'm glad the chat has been turned off because that makes it less likely that that's going to happen in this call. Yes. But if there are other yes. other things happening, guys, please keep the commission's conversations off of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. Please stop that. If you've done any of that, don't do it anymore. If you see people doing it, tell them not to do it because it's part, that is those are showing up as documentary evidence in antitrust cases like this one. So don't. Uh, I'm going to wheel. Oh, and by the way, I will show some numbers in this presentation. None of that is intended as advisory on what to charge or what to do. They're just examples. So, so that is also the case. I'm not conspiring or collaborating. And I myself am not a broker or an agent. So um, I'm going to share with you real quickly what we know from the NAR settlement at a high level. Then we'll jump into some of the common Q&A, a little bit about the philosophy. So um, first of all, who's covered? If you're uh, on this call, all NAR Realtor members are covered under the terms of the settlement. It means you don't have any liability as long as the settlement is agreed to by the court. It looks very likely that the settlement will be agreed to. It would be unusual for the judge to intercept this settlement and make significant changes. There are some exceptions. There's a lovely slide from uh, on facts.realtor that says who's not included in home services, not included. Uh, and employees of some of the larger companies are not included, included. But everybody here that's an independent contractor, realtor member is covered unless uh, unless you're with home services affiliates or also an employee of one of the large corporate defendants. There are 90 brokerages above $2 billion that are not covered, but uh, they are. Uh, it's just the brokerage itself. Their agents are covered. So even if you're at a brokerage that hasn't settled yet, say like an EXP, um, you are covered individually as a realtor member, so you don't have any particular liability. Uh, keep in mind, uh, that's a big deal. Um, people are saying, oh, well, there have been no cases that have involved agents. That is not true. Here in Texas, there have been cases where agents were named as defendants and would have to go through all the same rigmarole. By the way, the people they named were large teams. So that's just to keep in mind. Uh, the big highlights here, Tom, are the NAR settlement includes rule changes that go into effect in July at the end, probably at the end of July, it looks like right now. Um, it includes the seller lawsuits, but does not include the buyer lawsuits. There are buyer lawsuits still coming. So again, to all of you that are saying, I really hate NAR and I hate what they did and I'm going to drop my membership. The NAR national membership is 150 bucks. It is an umbrella liability policy, which, by the way, just covered most of you, if not all of you. And I would keep that $150 that you're paying to NAR. I'm not an NAR shill. I don't work for NAR. We don't even have a contract with them. We're not doing things for them. But I will tell you, the, the insurance policy just paid off in terms of handling your liability. We have buyer class action lawsuits that are still coming that are not settled. They're likely to be rolling out over the next two years. And who knows? There might be others that are coming as well. So as much as we may disagree or have criticism for NAR, and by the way, we, we've written about NAR, we have a lot of criticism for it as an organization, uh, the, your umbrella policy just paid, and at 150 bucks a year, that was pretty inexpensive. Um, so that that's that piece. The settlement must be approved by the court. I do see a lot of people saying, this is final, this is whatever, that's not true, the court has to sign off it. However, they're unlikely to make significant changes to the settlement. Okay. Uh, on facts.realtor, there's a very nice slide that kind of goes into detail about who's covered, who's not. Compensation rules changes are probably the biggest things that people are noticing. No requirement to be in a member of the association or MLS to receive compensation. It used to be you had to. You can go write an offer on a listing in a MLS that you don't do business with, and you can still be compensated for that on the buy side. So you, there's, there's no limits there. You don't have to join an association or MLS to be compensated. There's uh, the buyer broker field is gone. I think most people know that the compensation field comes out of the MLS. Uh, there can be no offers of you like guaranteed unilateral lateral compensation to a buyer broker. That affects us on the listing side as well as on the selling side. Uh, also, this one's big and it hits a lot of the Q and A we're getting right now, Tom. Uh, you cannot, if you're covered class settlement class member, you cannot create non MLS mechanisms, portals, social groups for the purpose of making uh, blanket offers of compensation to other uh, to other brokers like that is a prohibited activity. You can put it on your listings on your website or in your personal marketing. You can put it on a sign. You can put it in. You can email it to a, a broker that inquires or an agent that inquires, but you can't go rebuild the MLS. Uh, it, as long as you are an NAR member and are covered by the terms of the settlement, 
Um, and so that those are the big changes. So I've, I've got a few funny slides. So don't do things like this in your photos on the MLS. Don't try to sneak things into fields or photography. Don't do all that kind of stuff. That's bad. So, you know, don't work around. The, one of the big themes is don't try to work around these new rules. It will only get you in trouble Amen. and it will only cause you to violate your participation in the settlement as a covered member of the settlement. So please play by the rules. And I'm also referring to people, go read the settlement agreement. It, go read it. There's a whole section, uh, which is section 58, which has all the new rules in it. I highly re recommend that. There are some contract and disclosure changes. Many of these we've already accepted. You know, we can't say things are free. We must disclose fees. We have to have the buy. This is a big one. Buyer sign an agreement prior to showing a property. Notice I didn't say visiting an open house, specifically setting up a showing and taking them on a, on a tour. That's the language from the agreement. Buyer brokers can only be compensated. This is another big one. What's in the buyer agreement? If it's in the buyer agreement, the buyer can be, the buyer agent can be compensated for that. If it's not in the agreement, they cannot. So you can't bonus or pay around the buyer agreement. The buyer agreement stands and is the rule. Uh, and the amount of compensation cannot be open-ended. You can't just say in your buyer agreement, hey, this is what I'm um, just whatever the seller offers or whatever the listing broker offers. You can't do that. It has to be a number, a percent, an amount, something that can be calculated. So those are those are kind of high, high level, some of the changes there. We've got a few others. There's some seller concession rules. You can offer concessions. It's okay for as a listing broker, you can say there's concessions available. Uh, the concessions must be asked for in the contract. The concessions are, uh, are subject to open negotiations in the purchase contract. Uh, and again, the buyer agent may not be paid more than what's pre-negotiated on the buyer broker agreement. Uh, there's also rules around you. You can promote buyer agent compensation as a broker to broker payment. Uh, you can, but only on your own website for your listings or in your own marketing. You can't put it on the MLS. You can't put it on an alternative portal. It doesn't go to Zillow. It doesn't go to Homes. doesn't go to Realtor. doesn't go in the remarks. doesn't go in documents you upload to the MLS. Uh, and so that that's the new rules of the road. So, Tom, what this means generally is that we have changed our way of doing business. And I have two slides just to kind of encapsulate this. This is what we're referring to as the old way. This way was we had a listing agreement with a seller. And as the listing broker, there was a compensation offer that we would take the commission, say there's a compensation offer we're making to the buyer broker that goes into the MLS. The buyer broker is then guaranteed its compensation via this structure. And then sometimes there's a buyer agreement over to the side, just depending a little bit on your state and on your business practices. Sometimes it wasn't always there. Sometimes people would turn it in when they turn in the, you know, the, the purchase agreement. Sometimes they wouldn't turn it in at all because it's not required, right? So this buyer agreement may or may not exist depending on your state and your business practices. In the new world order, it's a little different. So the new world order, you'll notice here, Tom, this is a dotted line says this is a kind of a soft agreement. It may or may not have discussed prices and terms, may or may not have been a hard guarantee. In the new world order, uh, this is now a solid line, not supposed to show properties until it's signed, needs to be a fixed amount that is describable, nothing gets paid outside of that. And all of these lines are now solid. So all of this B2B compensation is optional. The MLS is used to promote promote available concessions, but not contractual concessions. And everything goes into the purchase contract, Tom. So the seller concessions, business to business compensation, all the terms, everything is governed by the purchase contract now, not by the relationship with the MLS, not by what somebody put on their website and said, hey, there's some seller concessions available. None of that matters until it's written. All right. That's the deal. It's got to go in the purchase agreement in order to solidify the deal. So that's the that's the big high level uh, on that. Tom, any comments on these? And then I've got a couple of questions that I know yeah. people have. Jack, before you, before you do anything, um, every smart person right now has already taken a screenshot of that. Yeah. Because that's now going to be, that's now going to be in your listing presentation. Could you, hey, Jack, will you go back one? Sure. Go back one. And now every smart person is going to go screenshot. Yeah. Mr. Mrs. Seller, this is how we used to do it. Yep. And then I'm just going to give you guys a second to screenshot it. And then you're going to screenshot this one. And you're going to say, yeah. let me explain how it's done now. I know it looks complicated. Uh, don't worry. I'm going to take this complexity and I'm going to make it simple and easy for you. But I need you to understand this is how it's done. This is the way it was. And this is how it's done now. That's but right. Jack, in, in kind of... 
two minutes or less because we've got to be mindful of time because I got started a little I know, late. You got, we got a powerhouse panel here to go through, so yes. I'm, I'm ha- happy to talk. What would you say is the is the sort of one or two most important, and if it's only one, that's great, um, either answer to the question you're getting the most or just insight from you to the industry? Yeah, so most of this, most of the insight I'm getting is people are in shock right now around the rules yeah. changes, Tom, yeah. and they are trying to do business the old way. And so an incredible amount of energy has been putting it, is being put into how can we continue the broker controlled offer of compensation to the buyer's agent? An incredible yes. amount of energy is being put into that. And I think it is wasted energy. I think it's really wasted energy. What we need to do is focus on educating our buyers and sellers about how right. things work now. And that actually the more effort you put into like, oh, I need to find all these secret places to stuff buyer agent compensation. I need to talk people into doing business the old way. We need to move on from that. And, and there's a yeah. lot of different ways that's expressing, Tom. And so that's kind of my big takeaway. I've got you know four or five of the common questions and they all are kind of related. They all kind of relate back to that. And I think understanding the buyer has to make their own deal with their agent about what they're compensated. And you, as a listing agent, actually, your job just got easier. You just say, here's the services I'm providing. And the buyers are going to bring requests. And there'll be seller concession requests or buyer agent compensation requests in the offers. And I'm going to help you sort that out. I'm going to help you do yes. that. But we have lots of questions around that. The other one I'd say that I'll mention, just because it, it keeps coming up, unrepresented buyers. That's the number two that we probably get is people coming and saying, what am I, how do I handle unrepresented buyers? The answer, again, this is like a very, what appears to be a very complex problem with very simple answers. You right. deal with that in your listing contract. What are the services that you deliver for an unrepresented buyer? And what do you charge for those? And you just express that with your sellers and say, look, if a person comes in unrepresented, I will help them get through a transaction, not as their agent as a transaction coordinator, or we'll assign them to another agent in the office who will provide them fiduciary service because that's how we do business in our office. But it just needs to be very clear up front. You have to decide what do you do with those unrepresented, unrepresented yep. buyers and put it in your listing contract. And that's it. Those are the big ones, I think, Tom. Yeah. Those are the big ones. Jack, this is so great because I was going to text you as soon as we're done and say, um, myself, Byron, Jamie, Lisa, a whole bunch of us, we've been working on scripts and dialogues to, to empower our clients, not, not as a read a script at someone, but to be able to articulate the differences, to be able to articulate, this is how I get paid on the buy side. This is how I get paid as a listing agent. And for my friend watching right now, we're going to make all of that stuff available for you. So you're all going to get a copy of it. You don't have to ask because we turn the chat off. Um, so thank you. Cause literally one of the scripts is exactly what you just said. What do we do with the unrepresented buyer? Right? So spot on. Okay. So we got a transition. We're now going to go into a very lively discussion with three brilliant agent, team leader, one broker, and talk about the, the three or four questions I prepped him on. But, but before we do, Jamie, just very quickly tell them who you are, where you're from, and how many properties, so Lisa and Byron, get ready. I'm putting you on the spot here, Jamie. How many properties you and the team have listed year to date? Yes. Jamie McMartin from Houston. Um, year to date, we've listed 63 properties um, to date. Okay. Congratulations. All right, Thanks. Lisa, you're up next. Uh, so Lisa Chinati, greater Boston area. Uh, I think the number was a hundred something so far this year. And our rock for the next quarter is to sign an additional 124. Love it. All right. So a hundred year to date. Byron, do you have the, the same insight? Tell them where you're from. Yeah. Byron Lazine, Connecticut. The question you asked me to prepare for was how many listings will you sell? Or no, how many yes. will you take this year? Last year, we sold 165. Yes. We have 27 active right now. Uh, how many we've taken and sold this year? I don't have that right in front of me, but I we're on we're flat. We're on pace for 165 listings sold, 31% of our business. Got it. So the reason why I bring that up and thank, thank you for the three of you is for context for someone out there that says, well, you know, I, I get 100% of the listing appointments I go on. Why do I need to change anything? Well, if you're going on like three, right? And it's your house, your mom's house, and your best friend's house. You're not in a competitive environment. I believe that we're going to go into a very, very competitive environment, not just because it's the spring market and inventory is tight, but because of what's going to happen come July. So, so I've asked these guys, you know, these, these two wonderful ladies and this gentleman to unpack for us. And I'm going to go right into maybe the first, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Before I do, Hector, put up my slide real fast. Put up my slide. 
I want to show you guys something and <laughs> I'm going to move beyond this and I'm going to go right here. So for all my viewers, take a moment. And, and so Jamie and, and Lisa and Byron, we're going to, we're going to riff on this for a minute. So I asked, uh, so one of my, one of my title partners has been sending me since last December, what's <laughs> happening in the Phoenix MLS. And if you're watching over here, you see the available side that's as of 313. And then the other side is closings from 218 to 316. And, and what I want you to view here is, by the way, you're not going to see any of this come July. But a lot of my smart clients are now taking this from their local marketplace on their appointments with them with both buyers and sellers. And, and here's what I'm looking at. What percentage currently are offering a co-broke of two, three, two and a half. You can see top left, it's the vast majority. But then when you look at the closed sales, you're also seeing some arrows down. You, hey, what's selling the most? Two and a half, three, two, still in that range. And it looks like it's about a third across the board in terms of the active listings that are selling, no matter what the co-broke offer is. So I think that's interesting. But the real reason I'm pointing this out to you is if you look down to the bottom left, active and coming soon listings as of 313, 2024, 162 listings active in the MLS with zero compensation. Come July 1st, it will be 100%. Mm -hmm. But right now it's a tiny percent of the market. And if you look on the right side of closings, and by the way, there's always been active listings for a dollar co-broke or zero co-broke. But what I'm trying to figure out is what's the trend and how does a smart agent like you use this information when you're on an appointment? So let me give you the updated one. Take a look at this. Two things you want to highlight. So again, we're talking about now based on active and coming soon listings as of yesterday in the Phoenix MLS and closings from 3.3 to 3.30. Couple things that really stand out for me and you can see some arrows where I'm highlighting some things that the three and 4% commission co-broke has been decreasing steadily. Zero and 2% co-broke is increasing. So you can look at that one of two ways. Wait, there's now 180 listings because last month there was 162. And if you look and say, wait a minute, last month, 42 of them went under escrow and closed during that time period. And this year, that number, you know, this month it's 43. Not a lot of movement there, but more increases in zero compensation. But you could see, Jack, it's crazy. It's all over the board, right? It's all over the board. Now, obviously, what I'm going to say to all of you is you need to have a conversation with your title executive and say, you need to get me all this data. I need all this data. I need it for the next, all the way up till July for every appointment you go on. So I know for my panelists, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't throw this out to you until this morning. I want to know Byron first, because you and I were just working on this. What would you say to an agent if they brought this with them on a buy side or sell side? What are you recommending they highlight, discuss, and point out to be the educator? And then Lisa, Jamie, we're all just going to round table and jump in here. That's great. And we, we've we been working on it. We pulled the number out of our local MLS, 97 today. So we're unlike the Phoenix MLS where they took it down to zero in October. But to today... 97.45% are offering 2% and above. So what I'd recommend bringing to a presentation is the closed number. I would yes. get rid I would get rid of the arrows. I love the arrows for our data internally yes. on the back end and I've encouraged yes. who's pulling our data. I said I want the arrows. I want to look at it. I want to see the trends. I want to see how how it's changing. But what I'm going to show a consumer is the closings because that's where a consumer, especially a seller, wants to get to. They want to get to the closing table. They want to get there on their terms, their timeline, and their net number. So let's show them those closing opportunities and show them the overwhelming amount of sellers who chose to make a buyer compensation a reality up front to take that negotiation off the table. Most people want to be like most people. 97.45% are offering 2% and above. It makes the decision easier for a seller when they see that with the data right in front of them. Yep. Lisa, what would you say? Jamie, what would you say? What? How would you use this or are you using this? Go ahead, Lisa. 
So we're not. And I, Byron and I were texting earlier. We can't get this data in Massachusetts. So I, I think that that kind of changes the equation a little bit um, with respect to how can we use it. I've reached out to a title rep and I still haven't been able to get my hands on it. So um, I may be a little bit different because I can't bring it. Okay. Text, text me and I'll make a text connection to, I think someone that can get it. I, one of my, one of the biggest title companies in yeah, the U S I'm friends with, I'll get you hooked up. Okay. All right, Jamie, same question. Yeah. I, I also think what would be important to know here is days on market, because I think you could actually put that into this chart as well and use that yeah. as a marketing piece with the sellers and show them that as the, you know, the compensation is decreasing the typically, and maybe days on market may be increasing as well. Yes. The, yes. The, the other way we ran this number were homes that, so to your point, Jamie, zero to the last 30 days. I don't, you know, unless the seller tells me I want to be on the market 150 days. Well, now we're having a totally different discussion. We're talking about an off market listing. But for those of you that want to utilize the MLS as a vehicle to getting your home sold, we really need to focus on those that have been on the market zero to 30 or zero to 60 days. Uh, so yeah. I agree with Jamie. You got to pull that yeah. data as well. Love it. So Hector, kill that slide and, and bring the bring all of us back up together again. So I want to start with um, Lisa. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm, Lisa, I'm going to come to you first. As a broker, what were the two or three most important changes that you had to make immediately? And then Jamie or Byron, either one of you want to share your insight from a team leader standpoint. But you know, what are you, what are you adjusting? What are you turning over to your attorney just on the seller side? Well, listing contracts, obviously, right away, right? I think that um, one of the things that we've become super cognizant of is that the entire structure of our contracts have to change to talking about, I think we have to separate out full commission and which percentage is going to be shared with the buyer to looking at it completely separately and saying there's straight listing commission. And then one of the verbiages that we're talking about is the percentage that we would be willing to pay. And that was, I think, one of the biggest changes because, and then addressing with the seller in the contract, when the buyer agency contract comes in with an ask less than what the seller would reserve, I think that there's a little bit of gray area about what happens with the leftover percentage in the cases that it exists. Um, we've become very clear, I think, to one of your points earlier, we are not a dual agency company and are going to remain avoiding dual agency because we don't think it's in the best interest of the consumer, either the buyer consumer or the seller consumer. Um, and then a lot of scripting work with our agents. One yeah. of the things that I'll, I'll just toss out is I, I do think we have to tread lightly with the conversations about how right now offers of compensation could impact days on market. As a broker with liability, I get a little bit nervous to think that yeah. it might be treading around the agents aren't going to show your homes if you don't offer commission, therefore you have to offer commission kind of stuff. So, um, and I've just been like double down on the the liability and the contracts and making sure that we've got enough disclosures um, and yeah. then disclosures that explain to consumers potentially what the risks are from the perspective of that we can't guarantee outcomes, right? So to the point that if they choose not to offer it, there might be impacts, but we're not held responsible or liable for those impacts. Uh, every single person listening, I would write this down. If you work for a broker, I would go to your broker and say, should we have some form of consumer-centric disclosure that states, if you opt to have no commission paid on the buy side, you know, basically we want to release liability from the fact that if it doesn't sell, it wasn't us. And, and Jack, I shared one with you and mm -hmm. <laughs> written by one of our great clients. It was a little egregious. It was a little aggressive. We both agreed on that, but thoughts on that, Jack, before we move off this subject. Yeah, I, I think part of what I think the context here that people need to be looking at is the DOJ has been looking into this for a long time. Yes. And they really want transparency in what's happening. They do value actual buyer representation. So I agree with everything Lisa said about being, yes. I would say if I was in brokers today, I would be, I would not do dual agency. I would do designated agency and say, we're going to assign a buyer's agent to work with you. And they want right. the clarity of what monies are being paid to who for what. So mm -hmm. what is the buyer get agent getting paid for? What is the listing agent getting paid for? So it is, while this is a big change, it's going to be super confusing because of all the change. The actual answers are fairly straightforward because it says 
here's who's doing what, here's what they're getting paid. So that's it. And read into it. They're trying to prevent this black box marketplace weird thing that we that they think we've had that they think has caused prices to be incorrect or wrong or biased in some way against the consumer. That's what they're trying to prohibit. So don't do things that look like that. And by the way, everyone here has value. Everybody's work here has value. Just put it in front of the consumer. We know that when you do that, they say, you know what? I want that help and I'm willing to pay for it. So be confident in that. 100% confident. So I want to go to Jamie and Byron here. And, and Lisa, you can pipe in as well. So I want to know, um, what are the objections you are training your agents on? And what are the objection handlers at this point? Yeah, and uh, to jump in there on Jack and Lisa's point, the, disclo the agency disclosure is the first thing that we started working on. Fortunately for us in Connecticut, as of April 1st, they made this used to be mandatory, now mandatory again uh, as of April 1st, coincidence on the timing, this mandatory yeah. disclosure form that explains the relationships. So we're yep. scripting. I'm personally doing the scripting with my team for the first time in, in a few years every single day. And we're hammering that home right now because that's step one that what Jack was yep. just talking about, explaining the relationship between when you explain the relationship between the seller and the listing agent as being in their best interest, it really makes it easy to start talking about why buyer agency is important. So some of the uh, objections here that I think we, we want to go over um, would number one would be what if the seller doesn't want to pay the fee to the buyers. It's going to, uh, and when we're talking about selling side and listing side, in particular. Um, and so how are we handling it and some of the things that we're working on right now? And, and so we're going like, hey, to make this a live role play. Jamie, you're the seller. Byron's a listing agent. The objection is I don't want to pay a fee on the buy side. Hey, Byron. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for coming over. I've seen all this stuff um, about the lawsuit. And you know what? I really just don't want to pay a buyer's agent. Yeah. And, and obviously we went through uh, some of the changes here on how agency works moving forward, other than commission, Jamie, the net price that we went over is still good. Am I right? Um, yeah, actually it's in the range that we were expecting. So just out of curiosity, could you be more specific why you don't want buyer agents being offered a compensation upfront to sell your home? Well, honestly, I just heard that we don't have to anymore. Absolutely. And, and you didn't have to before, right? And so that that's part of the, the, the misconceptions that we've gone over. And what I'd like to present, and I've got the numbers here, 97.45, I'd bring up that table, that over 97% of sellers obviously want the best price for your home, like you want on that net sheet. And they want to get that best price up front. They don't want to be haggled later in their transaction. I don't want to be just your agent on this deal, Jamie. I want to be your agent for the rest of your life. And if I could get you the price on this net sheet, isn't that most important to you? Um, you know, honestly, when you say it like that, it is. That is that is the objective. We know that, and you would probably agree, because I think you bought your home this way back when, when we bought it five years ago. We know that most buyers are going to negotiate this commission at some point in the deal. We both understand who, who's paying who, and they're not going to negotiate this at some point. Do you agree? Yes. So have I offended you in any way by giving you my best price up front? So we don't do a, a one price today and then a new price on the purchase contract? Not, not at all. Yeah, it's great. Great. So why don't we move forward and, and offer a buyer comp today so we can take that out of the equation later? Perfect. I love it. Live role play in That's front great. of about 22,000 people. Congrats, Byron. You've been, you've been working on this. All right. So, uh, Lisa, I would like you to throw the following objection at Jamie. Uh, you know, we're going to wait until July to put her home on the market because we were told it's free then. I'm, I'm hearing that one a lot right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, Jamie, I love everything about this. I, you know, I just think market's going to be pretty much the same. I think we're going to wait till July when it really actually becomes optional. Oh, interesting. Where where are you getting all this information from? What are you hearing out there? Uh, you know, every time I turn on the news or, you know, open the internet these days, it seems to be one of the big headlines that, you know, five and five and six percent commissions are gone. Oh, no, I know. I've seen it everywhere. It's pretty amazing. But just keep in mind, commissions have always been negotiable. 
Um, they've always been negotiable and it doesn't change that. So my fee actually in July is actually going to be the same fee that's today. Uh, okay, uh, your fee might be, but does, doesn't that change the buyer agent side? Yeah, that's true. Some other agents may offer services for less, but you're not permitted and you're not required to offer compensation for a buyer's agent. So keeping my uh, responsibility to you in mind, I don't recommend changing our marketing strategy that we spoke about. Okay, I totally understand. Um, the choice is yours, though. Okay, so if uh, if we talked about it later and decided that we wanted to move forward today, buyer agency commission is still fully optional? Absolutely. Okay, sounds good. Love it, love it. I, and, and again, I'm intentionally not opening up the chat for the 7,000 variations of, what was that? Yeah. I'm not sure, and this is how I would say it. And again, remember, Knowledge equals confidence, ignorance equals fear. These three have been role playing for a long time to work this stuff out. So Jamie, now you get to ask the following question to Lisa. But Lisa, you told me that my house is amazing and it's gonna sell quickly. So why would I pay any fee to the other side? And I'm even thinking about why I should pay you what you're asking for. Wow. Okay. So Lisa, yeah, Lisa, I really appreciate you coming over. Um, I'm sure you can agree. My house is super awesome, right? It's Jamie. It's one of the most amazing that I've seen in the in the past couple of weeks. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've been doing a lot of research. So why do I even need to pay a buyer's agent? And and would you actually reduce your commission because my house is so awesome? <laughs> well, Jamie. So I absolutely agree with that front. And here's the deal. What I charge you for is my market expertise and my knowledge. It's my advice and my guidance in helping guide you through the process and ensuring that we're going to net you the most amount of money at the end of the day with the best possible terms. Now, why would you want to offer buyer agency compensation, Jamie? It's an amazing question. Here's what we know is going to shake out with the changes. What's going to change on a move forward isn't necessarily that buyers aren't going to be, buyer agents aren't necessarily going to be paid. It's just how it's going to be offered. One of the things that I'm talking about with sellers, much like yourself, Jamie, is that by setting aside an amount that you and I decide is fair to offer to a buyer agent, we might be able to put a cap on the potential out of pocket at the end of the day. One of the things that I have heard in response to that, Jamie, is folks ask me, well, what if a buyer agent doesn't actually request that much? And it's a great question, um, but we can go through the process, have the budget set aside and know what the maximum out of pocket potential is gonna be. Does that make sense first? Um, yes, I think so. Okay. And then if by chance that buyer agent isn't as skilled a negotiator as I am or as the agents that I work with are, you're going to be able to retain that leftover money. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And like so, Okay. And then, Jamie, my job working with you and one of the things that I'm going to bring to the table through my value add is that when we receive multiple offers, which I'm confident that we will because your home is so amazing, it's in a great place with a phenomenal location and my marketing abilities are stellar. One of my jobs is to help you differentiate the nets of all of these different offers that we're going to get and suss out which ones have not just the best price and terms, but when we take all of those factors into, into account, what the actual bottom line is to you. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. So you're ready to move forward now? would love to. Let's do it. I love live role plays. All right. So um, for the three of you, right, I Jimmy, I don't know if you have access to this. And Jack, I should probably throw you in there. We have this private Facebook group amongst all of our coaching clients. And one of the clients just posted a couple of days ago the following. Tell me if you guys have heard this yet. Hey, one of my clients just called and said they read this like headline and can they have their commission back? Mm -hmm. Jack, you hear that? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, people are asking for that. And you just tell people, look, this is a class action lawsuit that's going through a settlement process. And if you're a member of the class, you'll be notified with a postcard. Everybody here's gotten these. You, you go to what the postcard tells you, you fill it out. And that's the process that you go through. So that, that's it. It's not an, it's not under anybody's control other than the settlement and the court, the court process itself. So that's how to direct people. It's a pretty unsatisfying answer, but it is the answer. It is, it is yeah. what's happening. And it's the, you know, the definition of educate, don't defend. There's nothing to yeah, defend there. I mean, what you just said, yeah. Jack, is what it is. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. That's how it's been. And, and I, I, you see me smiling because I think it is 
rather silly, honestly, right? But I think every person watching right now needs to understand that you may get that. And, mm. and that answer that you just received is the right answer. And I hope you document it. And by the way, for my friend that's watching right now all around the world, we're going to publish a list of objection handlers and just send it to you, right? You're going to know what to say and what to do. But I wanted you to see three people that have been preparing for this for quite some time and how they're able to eloquently answer these questions, handle the objection, educate the consumer. And Lisa, when Jamie said, yeah, the first time you didn't let her off, you kept going, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the key to really have your customer understand because there is a difference between an objection and a condition. An objection is like, no, I don't want the blue shirt. I want the white shirt, right? Like, so don't, you know, bring me some white shirts, right? That's an objection. The condition is like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Why do I have to do this? I read this headline that said six prints going away. Why are you telling me that it isn't? And Byron, why are you telling me? Why are 97% of the sellers doing this when we were told it was going away, right? Like they need to understand. So I think listening and being the educator is the most important piece. But I want to I want to transition to the other question that I had for our, for our three rock stars here, and whoever wants to go first, let's assume that the twenty two thousand people watching right now were on your team, and and you because of who you are as a team leader, because of who you are as Lisa as a broker, what is the advice that you're giving to your team besides from the late great Steve Harney? Shut up, sit down, get calm, <laughs> think, plan, and act. What is the advice that you you guys and gals want to share with all of our listeners? Like, what must they do? And then just for the record, everybody, we're going to take a little transition and Jimmy Mackin's going to talk to you about five killer listing campaigns because my promise is I'm going to get you more listings also. But whoever wants to go first, fire away. Best advice that you're telling your team that you recommend for the industry. Uh, all right. I'll, yeah. I'll jump in unless Lisa, I mean, Lisa likes cutting me off in the pod. You, you want to jump in? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lisa, you're going first. <laughs> so mine is that, and I've said this over and over, I'm pretty vocal about it. I think that there's going to be three buckets of agents that come out of this with yes. three levels of J curves and learning curves that come out of it. The ones that start practicing now, that implement it now, that are role playing, that are testing it with customers and getting the buy in and getting over the drunk monkeys before they absolutely have to, they're going to feel like this little pothole of a J curve. I think it's going to be a very little one where they're going yeah. to experience it, have a little bit of a bump, but work it out. And then their J curve is going to be phenomenal and they're going to do really well. Right. And then there's going to be the middle group where they wait until maybe like June 1st, where it's like absolutely mm -hmm. like, all right, we got to do it. And they're going to experience a true J. They're going to be okay, but they're going to experience a little bit of a bigger bottom and not as fast of an up and maybe not as high up. And the first group is already going to be like worlds ahead. And then the third group that waits until July, they're flatline and not because they don't have a J, but because they're dead. They're just, they're going to be so far behind everybody else that they need CPR. Yes. So yeah. for context, if you're like, what is she talking about with the J curve? My, all of my coaching clients know this, but I'll just fast version. Dr. Jerry Jellison, who's a professor at USC, he, he did this study in the J curve, Jerry Jellison. He decided, Jack, that everybody sits right here at their current situation. My current business, my current mindset, my current income. We all have this desire to get up here. The challenge and what Lisa's identifying is to go from here to here, you never go from here to here. You go, oh my goodness, this is super scary. I'm not sure if this is going to work out. Oh my God, I'm working so hard, but wait, it's starting to get a little bit easier. And oh my God, I'm in momentum. That's what she means. All of us have to be willing to jump into what I call off the cliff of OMG WTF. AKA, oh my God, where's Tom Ferry? In case you were wondering, it wasn't a dirty word. You got to get off that cliff. And that's what Lisa's talking about. How fast are you willing to go to your next buyer who's your friend and says, hey, I want to go look at this house. And you're like, wonderful, Jamie. I'd love to show you that house. Let me ask you a question. Has anybody taken the time or have you read anything about the new NAR settlement? They say, yeah, I saw a little bit about it. Like your commissions are going away. Are you okay? Well, actually, one of the new things is we have an agency agreement now between client and agent that discloses what we do and how we do it and what our fiduciary responsibility is and ultimately how we get compensated. And I know it's going to sound crazy, but guess what? Myself and no other agent in town can actually show you a house without that signed agreement. Like if you're not willing to make that jump 
with the safest people on the planet, your past clients and people in your sphere, you're that third group that she's talking about. That is just going to be not, not obliterated. You're not there. You're not going to leave the industry. It's not the end of the world. It's just going to be a very rough patch for you. So I just, Lisa, I love your answer. Byron, you're up next. Yeah, what is the advice that you're offering to people right now? We immediately changed our training on a dime. We got rid of all the nice to have training. Yeah. So yep. if it's not this stuff, we're not training on it. We're not putting an investment behind. Well, we are putting an investment behind it, but you're going to do it on your own time. Every single one of my agents right. has access to Tom Ferry Alum as coaching clients. Yep. Every single one of yep. my agents has access to Bamax. You want to chase the... How to do a geo farm? Great. On your own time, there's a bunch of content on it. We're going to train on talking to customers, to talking to co customers who have a better chance of creating clients for yes. a lifetime. So the Wednesday after the proposed settlement, we made changes immediately to the paperwork that we're presenting to buyers. Okay. That mandatory disclosure and getting that buyer rep form, no matter what type of lead they are before the tour starts. We're two weeks and a day in. We've had one buyer who didn't want to sign. We had two. We handled the objection on one. The other one, the objection wasn't handled. The notes and FUB were just didn't want to sign. We're working through that. Who's Here's the next piece of advice I'll give you. Who's Hold the on, best? Byron. Hold on, Byron. How many signed it, though? Um, I will get you that data. That is a good enough. But it's, I mean, we're we're generating... You know, give them give them context. Generating you, thirty you appointments heard. a week, so there's at least yeah. fifty plus who have signed it in the last Got two it. weeks. Thank okay, yeah, through ISA and through agents. Mm -hmm. Now, next Second piece of advice it, right? is whoever's the best in your team, organization, office, whatever, at working on these role plays needs to find the time today to make it a commitment running through July every single yeah. day. It's why I'm doing it for my team 9 to 9.30, Monday through Thursday. I haven't led role play, Tom, certainly not yeah. this consistently, since 17, 18, and 19 with my team. I know for a fact too many of us on this Zoom in this industry in years 20, 21, 22 got further away from the roles that made us great. Lisa and I, along with Tom Tool, have been talking about this in our group chat for a while. We kept trying to replace these different roles instead of focusing on the things that are really important to the growth of our company. We need to go back to that immediately. And if it's you leading the role play, you've got to make the time available to do that. And I'm finding that as, as I do it, as I have people recording it and I'm looking back at it, I'm changing this. Oh, I yeah. like the way I said that. Tom, what did you do at the uh, keynote last week that I was with we you? you said, yeah, I mean, I was You're just like, thinking, so- Write that Go down. Ahead. Just set it on the fly. Yes. That's a good script. Write that down. Right. But okay. You guys are both making such key points, right? Byron, do you have a third or can I move to Jamie? You can move to Jamie. Okay. Jamie, same. So we got get through the J curve, <laughs> rip off the bandaid, go. We got immediately start role-playing scripts and dialogues, do it all the way through July. There is a direct correlation for my friend watching right now, skills and income. We went away from a skills market in 2020, 2021, 2022. It was demand on steroids. Help me get this house because it's going to go up by 100 grand by the time I finish the escrow and didn't take a lot of salesmanship. Now, those that had it probably earned higher fees, probably earned more money, probably spent less time with buyers and sellers. And those that didn't, uh, they struggled a bit. And so, Jamie, go ahead. Jamie, let me just jump in yeah. real quick. The other thing that we did in 2021, 22, we got away from what was the original idea around teams and or great yeah. organizations or great yeah. offices where, yeah. oh, I'm just so inundated with buyers. I want to be well-rounded and do everything. Yeah. When there's a large percentage of people on this Zoom and in this industry that aren't ever going to be great at listing and, and working with sellers, but are great at buyer agency and vice versa. We're going to go yep. back to a world of specialization and customization for the client on the other yep. side. 1,000%. Yep. Jamie, wrap it up with most important advice. I think if you're looking at from a seller perspective, like the most important thing that we've done so far is revamping our marketing. We've done a really good job as listing agents to make it seem like we have it so easy that we do nothing behind the scenes and all of that. Yep. So now what we're doing is making our marketing show our value. 
um, I think it's really important to put the list out there. Whatever it is that you do for your, your sellers is to make that known to your sellers. Um, yep. so some of the other things that we've talked about that we've already talked about is the popcorn role play. And the one thing I do want to mention on role playing, I think a lot of people role play in their head, but I think it's super important to role play like out of your mouth. I think you've got yes, it. Yes. It's different in your head versus when it comes out. And then the yeah, bonus yeah. thing that I would say is start now. Our team right now is going all in. This is going to be the norm on April 15th. So I, I think you do it now. Don't wait till later. 100%. Yeah. So I, I wrote something down for everybody watching. First of all, the three of you, thank you. And, and we are going to continue to do more and more of this. You're going to see an announcement from my company. We may do six more of these where we just get narrow around just objection handling. So you don't have to say it in the comments. We'll send you an email. You're going to, you're going to be exposed to a lot of my best coaching clients like these three, giving you their best scripts and skills. And we're going to continue to put out like Jamie, I think the next Instagram, watch, watch this Byron, the next Instagram reel is the NAR list of 175 things that the average buyer agent does for a consumer. And then you take my N24 negotiation things that we do on your behalf. And we start to say, look, when you're, when you're trying to buy a house, were you aware there's 175 decisions that need to be made and 24 things you need to negotiate? You can take all of that on your own, or you can just make one decision, which is to hire me. Now I'm going to make it much more elegant than that and much more consumer centric than that. But I am obsessed with what we're going to go into next, which is Jimmy Mackin on marketing. And Byron, you're already thinking about how to make it better. So when you do, send it to me and then we'll get it to everybody. And part of making it better, if I can jump in one more time, this Please. is something I said to my team this morning. I said, guys, part of role playing, when you're not the person role playing, it's coming out of your mouth, like Jamie said, is actively yep. listening. If you're not taking notes right now, as if you're putting this conversation into FUB or whatever your CRM is, you're missing an opportunity to become a better listener. And those of you that are taking notes, I mean, I took the note today, uh, what Lisa said, cap on out of pocket. I haven't really heard that inside of a script. It, that was it made her sound really smart and, and it could make me sound smart too if I can find a way to integrate this. So the more you actively listen as if you're on a live call and these notes are going to yep. go into your CRM, yep. the better you're going to become when you're in, in the real game. All right. So I'm going to do a little transition before I bring up Jimmy Mack in, and we may go a few minutes over. And if you're watching right now, hold tight because the five campaigns, Jimmy, I'm thinking about what we did during the 100K and 100 day program. Just for context, everybody, Jimmy and myself and, and a small group of our clients, like 2,394 agents, you know, did this little campaign that we're going to talk to you about from September of last year to the end of the year. And this small little cohort of group generated over 19,000 listing appointments in the fourth quarter of last year, secured 7,400 listings, 7,401, I think was the exact number, and did another 11,000 buyer transactions. Jimmy, I just got the updated numbers. I'll send them to you from Sally and my team. It was over $11 billion in sales, right? Over $11 billion in sales from the kind of stuff that Jimmy's going to share with you. But before I do, I want every one of you to write down this number. Ready? 1-800. Write down 1-800-624- 9575. 1-800-624-9575. You guys got that number? 800-624-9575. Quick little opportunity. If you are, if you're feeling right now, yeah, thank you, Hector. Perfect. I, I assume we had a little slide. If you're feeling nervous, if you're feeling uncertain, if you're feeling like you don't know what exactly is going to happen. If you're like, I don't even know how to role play or who could I role play? There's no one for me to role play with. If you're feeling any of that anxiety or like my clients, you have that eustress feeling, that positive stress. Like we just came out of these mastermind groups and Lisa, we're like, this is our market. We got this. We're going to take market share. There's only two kinds of agents right now. I'm not including the people with their head in the sand. There's people that are absolutely uncertain, nervous, feeling anxiety, feeling stress, don't know where to start. And then there's this group. And all I'm going to say to you is, if you're a part of this group and you want to be a part of that group, you call that number. But I've never done this before. Listen up. I'm going to make you three promises if you decide to join our community. Three promises. Promise number one. So all my coaching clients that are watching right now, listen up. We're going to run a more advanced version of the make you $100,000 in the next 100 days, starting May 1st, just for you. 
So a more advanced version, meaning more calls, more marketing, more insights, more plug and play, easy to do. Send to your database, field the calls, handle, go get appointments, go take listings, go make sales. We're going to start that on May 1st. So heads up, if you decide to join us, you're going to be a part of that. The second thing is I'm going to give you a seven times your money back guarantee. So you call my office and you say, okay, I've watched forever. I know who Tom is. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the plunge. I'm going to join this group over here. I'm going to move from uncertainty to certainty. I'm going to make your excuses go away by saying, I'll give you seven times your money back guaranteed. Like you're going to invest a dollar. You're going to make seven, right? By the way, it's a little over a hundred thousand dollars and I'm going to do it in the first hundred days from you becoming a client. Like that's my mindset. And if you do it today, you're going to get 50% off your first month. So we're going to take 50% off your first month. You're a client. Start May 1st. Let's go right into this campaign. Have someone to role play with. Get all the marketing you need. And we're off to the races. Here's the only challenge. I have 93 spots. We have 11,000 live accounts going right now, right? I have 93 spots based on my coach's availability starting this month. So if you call my office right now, you call my office the second Jimmy is done. If the phone is, if it's no one answers, it's because I only have 11 consultants. So be patient, but there's a lot of you watching and a lot of my clients that know this is coming. So you call that number. We're going to give you those three promises. We're going to make you a fortune, but most importantly, we're going to get you into a state of certainty. So with that said, let's go into some marketing. So Jimmy, you ready to take it away? Yes, sir. Uh, well, first off, this has been an amazing discussion. I mean, I've got I've got personally pages and pages of notes here from from everyone who's been participating. So I think everyone who's who's on the session right now hopefully feels the exact same way. Yes. So before we before we dive into it, uh, one thing you and I know, Tom, is that y- you can you can chase buyers, but you have got to attract listings. Thank you. And and there's a number there's a there's a data point at the beginning of today's session that you shared. You asked this this group here with the probably 20,000 plus people who are watching live. You asked them, how many of you feel like you're investing enough in marketing? And 81%, I wrote the number down, 81% of the people who were participating and participated in the poll said they're not doing enough marketing. And I would argue that 100% of us are not doing enough marketing. And especially as we go into this sort of next three months going into the election season here, we have to we have to have this basic idea and tom and i talk about this all the time this idea of this massive bias for action and so what i'm going to share with you today are not just five marketing ideas or five marketing strategies these are five listing attraction strategies that are working right now so whether you're a new agent uh who has no database no sphere of influence you're, you're new to your area you don't have a farm or you're an experienced agent and you're looking to say, you know what, I want to step on the gas, which I know many of you want to. Uh, these strategies can be applied for you and your team. And so what's going to be exciting about this, these don't require big budgets. They don't require you to be uh, sophisticated with technology and you know, know how to use AI or get in front of a camera. These are tactics and techniques and strategies, as Tom mentioned earlier, that we help get over $10 billion in production. And by the way, Tom didn't mention this. This was in Q4 of last year. And if you look at the last 12, 13 years in real estate, one could argue that Q4 of last year was the worst quarter in U.S. housing history. And so these tactics we're going to share with you are designed to get you in motion, help you start conversations, and ultimately get you appointments. So on that note, let's go ahead and share my screen here. Hector, it should be able to pull up. And Tom, give me the green light here if you guys can see me. Yep, we can. But yeah, there you go. Slideshow makes it better. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we're going to break it down here. Uh, five strategies. I'm going to break this down. Magic buyer letter strategy, the name your price campaign, the perfect just sold, the email equity campaign, and finally, IG polls for seller leads. So uh, we are actually, Tom and I were in Texas um, just yesterday. Uh, I guess Tom's always in Texas because he lives there, but I was in Texas yesterday and we were sitting down with uh, our guy, Charlie King. And Charlie yep. comes up to me and goes, hey, we mailed this campaign, this campaign I'm about to show to you, he's, we mailed it and we already got five phone calls. Now for context, he mailed this to 1500 people. So he probably spent somewhere between 700 and $800 and instantly he got five phone calls. Now to be clear, this was not a farm. He's been farming for 12 months or 18 months. This is not an area where he's been running ads. This was a green field opportunity. He sent this letter. He got 
five phone calls. This is the called the magic buyer letter. It's turning your buyers into listings. And I'm sure all of you who are watching right now likely have a buyer or many buyers who are pre-qualified, ready to make a move, but for whatever reason, haven't quite found the home yet. And so the magic buyer letter strategy is taking those buyers, those pre-qualified buyers, and turning them into a listing attraction asset. So here's the campaign. Starts off like this. Dear homeowner, I'm writing to share a unique opportunity that may interest you. This is what we call the hook. This is something that you just have the very beginning of a letter, of an email, of a campaign. You're, you're doing that to attract their attention. The next part of the letter is the reason. Why are you reaching out right now? What's the purpose of this? A young couple eager to join your neighborhood has, has tasked me, and look at the language there, guys. I'm sure Byron and Lisa and Jamie have some thoughts on this, but a young couple eager to join your neighborhood has tasked me with, with finding the dream home. They've been outbid on a of several properties, and they're now exploring uh, homes that are not currently on the market. So what I'm doing here is I have a hook and I'm giving them a reason why I'm in their mailbox. Then we get into what we call the self-selection phase. This is when I'm using language like, hey, if you're thinking about potentially maybe exploring the idea of selling, if it's even crossed your mind, this is a no pressure act. This is just an invitation to explore some possibilities and match you with some of my buyers. So at this stage of the campaign, if the person's reading this campaign, they are now at the stage where they're saying, yeah, I actually have thought about maybe potentially putting my house on the market. And you can see what Charlie's doing with this letter. He's diffusing it. He's not saying, if you've been thinking about selling right now, give me a call. No, he's saying, hey, if you've been exploring the idea and it's crossed your mind, then hey, you should keep reading. And then finally, he has what I refer to as a low pressure CTA. Hey, thanks for considering. Feel free to contact me at your convenience to chat further. I mean, Tom, we both know this. You cannot, and it's not even our job, to convince someone to sell. Our job no. is to give them the information so they can make an informed decision. And so what sellers really appreciate, and that's what just generally in marketing, what people appreciate is they appreciate when you, they don't feel pressured. They don't feel rushed. They don't feel like their arms being twisted. So Charlie went with this low pressure CTA. So this is what we refer to as the ma magic buyer letter campaign. Here's my advice. If I'm an agent right now who's watching this or watching the live version or the recording is I would think about this from going from one farm to the next. Identify five or 10 buyers that you work with. Identify maybe a few thousand homes you want to farm to and then pick 500 homes, a thousand homes and send it to that farm. And the key here is personalization. It has to be a real buyer. They have to be serious about that neighborhood because that authenticity will certainly come through with your marketing campaign. Tom, anything to add there before we go to number two here? No, I love this piece. And we promised them we would try and end in an hour and 15 minutes. And I'm now feeling pressure. <laughs> so okay. we got to okay. step on the gas, give them all the value. All right, let's keep rolling. And this is the campaign. You got to take a screenshot of this. All right, name yep. your price campaign. Tom knows I can talk faster, so we'll get rolling here. Yes. This one, we got. this was in our inbox. We just got a $750,000 listing appointment from this campaign. The campaign is subject line, name your price. Hey, Jimmy, could you finish the sentence for me? If I could sell my house for blank, I would list my house this spring. I can't wait to hear your answer. Pro tip, you can send this every quarter. You're not advertising to an audience, you're advertising to a marching band. So the idea of using, if you've done this before in the past, do it again, you can go back to the wellness several times. Now, give you a quick pro tip. When something works with one medium, you can expand it to another medium. This is an example, yes. my guy, Jason Wright, Coach Jason Wright with Tom Ferry's organization. The guy, he generated six, look at, the, look at this, this text here, guys. $16 million in listings from the campaign I'm about to show you. Now, it's nice to be in Southern California, but you can see here, he's got about, I'd say another 14 million on deck here as well. Same concept as name your price, just delivered via a postcard. No branding, no behind the scenes, no photo of him, no reviews, just name your price, scans yeah. it, goes to a QR code, goes to a landing page where they can fill the information out. Sent out to 5,000 people. He got 500 scans. He's got 16 million in listings with another 14 million on deck here. Now, here's the thing. This is a quick pro tip. Again, if something works, if a marketing campaign works in one medium, you can ex you can actually expand it to multiple mediums. So adding as a, e if it works as an email, you could do it as a postcard. All right, so that's number two, uh, Tom. Number three, 
Number three on the list. And you actually heard Jamie say this earlier, and I think it's worth taking just yeah. a second to share this. The worst mistake that we can make in real estate is we tell everybody it's simple, it's fast, it's easy. And we're surprised when they say, hey, like, why are you so expensive? And so what we want to do is we want to start showing the sweat. And so what you're looking at right now, and everyone should follow this guy on Instagram, Modern Chicago Homes. This guy generates 70% of his business from Instagram. And he's he is, to me, one of the better marketers on Instagram. He has what I call the perfect just sold campaign. And so when you sell a property, and if you market the right way, it can create more listings. Here's what the, it's a carousel post. So you can just take a look at what we have here. Trust his estimate, not so fast. He has that hook. The next slide, I just sold this house for 61,000 above this estimate. Here's how. He highlights all of the marketing he did to promote the property. He then highlights all of the photography he did and staging he did. He highlights all the social media promotions he did. He highlights all the open house marketing he did. He then highlights the actual end results. And finally, he gives a customer testimonial and then ends with a CTA. This to me is the perfect way to market a sold. Instead of saying sold 3% above the list price in five days, show the sweat. And just as a quick disclaimer, we're going to give you all the slides and have all this information you can dig into a little bit deeper. This to me is a fantastic example of taking every listing and turning it into more listings. All right. The next campaign I'm going to show you, number four here in the list. I'm going as fast as I can here. Number four on the list is how do you generate listings from your database? How do you generate listings from your database? Well, one way to generate listings from your database, as we all know, is the unsolicited CMA. That's sending your VIP clients an updated CMA as a way to deliver value. And then in addition to that, start a conversation about what the real estate goals are. And so the basic idea is I would send Jamie a CMA and say, hey, Jamie, I just did the CMA for your property. Based on the market comps and the market condition, your home is worth anywhere between 620000 and 650000 Just want to make sure that you knew you know, where your house is at. When you, do a mark, when you do a CMA, the next thing that you should do is if it's a notable CMA where the consumer has gained, let's say, a few hundred thousand dollars in equity in the last couple of years, or maybe even like $30,000 in equity, you should turn that into an outbound marketing campaign. So you can send an email like this. This is called the equity update email. Hey, Tom, I just did a home value equity for my clients. They gained 35000 in the last 12 months. In fact, since they bought the house in 2013, the home has increased 163000 If it's been a while since you've gotten your home value assessed by a professional, maybe it's time to receive an equity, up, uh, equity update equity report for you. Can I prepare one for your home? So follow the logic here. We're doing the CMA per day, right? We're sending this to our VIP clients. We come across a notable CMA, something where the consumers gain a lot of equity, something that's what we refer to as a marketable moment. We then send an email to our database of prospects and leads and maybe even our SOI, letting them know that, hey, my client was shocked. In addition to that, again, the land and expand strategy, you should also find 100 homes around that property and send yeah. this exact letter. Same concept, but we're doing it to the farm, okay? And so this is the CMA strategy. Do an unsolicited CMA, send the email, and then finally do the postcard. Last one for you, Tom. This is a cheat code, in my opinion. I mean, Instagram is one of the few social media sites, and you know this, Tom, one of the few social media sites where you can still reach people organically. I mean, Facebook's pay to play, Google's pay to play, Instagram, you can still reach people organically. What you're looking at right now is an Instagram, and we'll give you guys a template for this. This is an Instagram poll. And so the idea is whether you're posting about listings or posting about sales or posting about coming soon or market updates, you can bookend your stories with these polls. When's the last time you checked your home value? It's the last seven days, not recently, or it's been too long. As people are seeing your stories, as they're interacting with your polls, it's giving you the opportunity. It's opening the door for you to slide into their DMs and have a conversation about potentially what their real estate goals are. So using Instagram. Instagram polls like the one you're seeing on the screen are a fantastic way to generate inbound seller leads from IG. I'll give you one last one. I was texting with uh, uh, our friend, Vanessa Riley, 
uh, Domo Realty. And you can see here, she's like, hey, I got five conversations, including one seller nurture. She gives me the, like the laughing emoji because you can't believe how easy this is. Here's the actual story she used. My make me move price is blank. And then people would just drop in their number and she's sliding into their DMs and having conversations. So the five strategies are magic buyer letter, the name of your price, email and postcard, the perfect just sold campaign, the equity update email and postcard, and then finally using IG polls to generate free seller leads. I love it. Hector, get, it, get us back to all five of us. I have to say, it's fun for me to watch three of my best clients and, and good friends taking notes while Jimmy is presenting this stuff. Doing that, stealing that, doing that, stealing that. And I know for the person watching, you're doing the same. I just want to remind you, you got 96 days. You got 96 days. Lisa said it, J Curve, be that first person, jump off the cliff, get started, do it now. Jamie and Byron both said the same thing. Knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. If I know what to say, I'm going to win. If I don't know what to say, I'm going to put my head in the sand. And Jimmy just gave you enough marketing, certainly to start a war. But I'm going to remind you, I got 93 spots. I got 93 spots. If you are feeling an ounce of uncertainty, you need to call my office and say, okay, you're going to make me 100 grand in the next 100 days. You're going to get me through this. You're going to help me be a bison. This is not a time, my friends, for being uncertain. This is not a time for doubt. You have to eliminate all of the doubt and uncertainty mm -hmm. and move forward. We're going to help you do that. All my coaching clients, you know, you know me. That is my promise to you. We are going to move you forward just like we did during the pandemic. So if you're ready to join us, you call my office, 800-624-9575. All right, Byron. Did you see yesterday that I'm the new CEO of, of Broke Agent? Did you see that on my stories? <laughs> I did. Eric is, is still mentally <laughs> fragmented over this. But yes. I, Tom, I've been broke. I'll never be the broke agent. I just want to make that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, you know how much I appreciate you, buddy, and I'm going to see you soon. Jamie, I love you. Thank you for role-playing and your insights. Lisa, same thing. Love you. Thank you for your role-playing and insights. Um, we're a community. We're going to do this together as a community. And look who just got back off one of his other Zooms. Jack, same exact thing. I'm always grateful for you, for your leadership, for your stewardship for this industry, right? You, Stefan, the entire team. So as we, as we come to an end of this, Jimmy, thank you. Same thing, marketing, listing attraction, listing leads, all this great stuff. Now it's up to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to, hmm, like a bison, go right at this? Because if you're going to do it, you got to start doing it now. Mm -hmm. Call my office if we can help. You want to be a part of this special group? We'd be honored to work with you. All right, we're out. We'll see you guys on the next one, or I'll see you live at an event soon. God bless you. Get to work. We'll see you soon. Hey, if you like this content, make sure you get back to my channel and check out Jason Pantana, This Week in Marketing. Top 30 content.